and we are recording. Hi, Carlos. Hello, Anne. How are you today? I'm okay. I'm okay. It's, you know, uh, I just realized today, I think, that um, the early days of sort of panic and running like crazy, uh, you're, you're going to burn yourself out if you do that. And I, I'm, I'm trying to hunker down for what looks like a longer haul than originally anticipated. It does look like longer haul. And you know, I, I, was, I was brought up by nuns and therefore I am totally following the rules. I am staying home. I am not even going, I, I have stocked up my pantry and I am just being real creative with like, ah, spam. You know, I haven't eaten this for 10 years. Let's see what it tastes like now. I'm not going out. I'm going to just definitely try to really see if we can hunker down all of us together uh and you know we hairdressers have so much influence i think if people see us doing it they'll want to do it too oh yeah i i do what i do see you doing is still taking really good care of yourself i i love that you're still i mean you're suiting up properly but you're still getting out there getting yeah. out for a walk keeping that social distance but yeah, I have a huge hat, and I made myself a, a mask out of a sock, which I picked up from YouTube, and I wear that, and I have sunscreen, and I, I do a lot of writing because I have a few curriculums that I'm working on for schools, and so I sit a lot. I have to get out there. So I hope that they don't take our walks away, because if they do, I'm going to be really sad. <laughs> I know. I know. That would be hard. So... You're in Arizona. What's going on specific to your state? Oh my God, man. You know, I don't know. I think we talked about this last time. The uh, governor or the state of Arizona decided to call uh, or name us essential services, which, you know, at first I thought it was pretty cool. Hey, we're just uh, up there with uh, firefighters and first responders. But then I realized that because we were first responders, we could actually not apply for unemployment benefits because technically you should be open. So I had a lot of my buddies and my friends and uh, people that uh, read us on Modern and so on contact me and say, my God, do something about this. And I'm like so limited. And I, I don't, I mean, so I did post some stuff on, on my Facebook, but the thing is, here's, here's, here's the good thing. The thing is that the governor decided to go on television and like with an eight hours notice and the TV station decided to ask, oh, send in your questions to the governor for this mandate. Well, there were over 5,000 questions sent in. And you know, I didn't see the, the, the data. I don't know who, and because there's child services and all this other stuff also that there was involved. But the very first question out of the hat, which has to be the one that had the most, was about the salons. What about salons? Why are they first responders? And how can they be first responders and be six feet away? And, you know, I, it was just crazy. So it happened. Well, within a day, 24 hours later, that whole thing was rescinded, which is a testament to all my peeps. They were so good. They all, we all rallied together, proving once more, Anne, that we are all interconnected. Absolutely. I mean, what better proof of interconnection do we need than the fact that the virus started with one person in China and now a lot of people have it. That's an unfortunate example of interconnectedness, but we are in this together. We are not alone. No, no, though we can feel it. And you and I were talking about the temptation or the tendency to go to fear and not just uh, personally, but professionally, because, yes. you know, because of the unknowns and the uncertainty of what are things going to look like. Talk, kind of go back to that, Carlos. Talk about what you were saying about fear. Well, and you know, you know uh, I have a good friend of mine, Rick, 
and he and I were talking because, you know, now we, I think all of us are doing a lot of talking on the phone or a little bit more than we normally do. Hopefully it's with our clients. But he said to me something very, very smart. And he said, you know, I thought I was afraid of what the unknown because I don't know what's going to happen. But I realized that I'm not afraid of the unknown. The unknown, I don't know. I'm afraid of the known. And I thought, hmm, this is really weird. So what do you mean, the known? And he said, well, you know, when you don't know something, when you don't know the solution, you make up a solution. So we've made up these stories about, oh, what's going to happen? My salon's not going to be there. My clientele's not going to come back. Hey, the distributor, he's not going to have any product to sell me. And I'm not going to be able to make my rent, my mortgage payment, my car payment. And, you know, we make up this horror story in our mind. And we play it over and over until we own it. So all of a sudden you realize that you're not really being afraid of the unknown. You're afraid of the known and the tape you're playing. So take away from that, I would say, would be, when you realize you're being afraid and into fear, just step back, take a deep breath, and just say to yourself, you know what? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And people ask you, hey, Mr. Hairdresser, Miss Hairdresser, Miss Nail Tech, Miss Skincare Person, Mr. Masseur, what are you going to do when this is over? How's it going to shake out? You're just going to say, we don't know. And you're going to use we like the Pope uses in plural because you didn't create this problem. For once in our lives, we're off the hook. It's something we didn't do. So we don't know the solution yet. But whatever the solution is, it's going to come. Trust. We will have answers. They may not be what you exactly want and in the time you want, but there'll be answers. There's, there's solutions happening already. People talking in chat rooms. I don't think I've ever learned more long hair and stuff on online than I have now. You mean like up to styling or? Up to styling and, and going into seeing uh, what people are saying, what other people's solutions are. Uh, definitely reach out to, to, your, to your buddies, to your salon people. I think people are people are connecting with each other. And like I said, you don't, don't play the horror film again. I mean, you don't know. You're just kind of, it's kind of like a masochist thing to do, you know, to come up with all these bad scenarios. None of them are going to happen. As I'm Carlos Valenzuela, all those things that you think are gonna happen to you are not gonna happen. And what happens? All of them are going to have solutions in some way or another. I mean, don't you think so, Anne? I think what you said at the top about, you know, we invent or we project or we visualize worst case scenarios, which it's not helpful because, as you also said, this is out of our control. We didn't do it. So you do what you can control. You go for your walks, you wear your mask, you try and look for the, you know, some positive news to counterbalance all the bad news that we're hearing. You know, you talked about your meditation practice and, um, you know, I think that a lot of people, as soon as you use the word meditation, they're sort of resistant because they'll say, I can't quiet my mind or I can't, you know, I have this monkey wheel in there. But really, you were talking more about almost a, a gratitude or, or sending out, you know, uh, a message of, of love to yeah. the people in your life as, as a practice, as something you can control and do that is, puts you in a more positive frame of mind. You know, meditation is so misunderstood. I mean, I am such a misunderstood person. <laughs> meditation is so misunderstood. I mean, people imagine somebody sitting on a rug with a, in a 
position, eating celery. Uh, no. Meditation has many forms. And one of the simplest ways to meditate, which is great, because it will actually allow you to stay in touch with your clients. One of the simplest ways to meditate is to send out love and kindness. Now, yep, some of you maybe listening to this think, oh my God, you know, this is so unsubstantiated, but I would ask you to do it for two days and then like the old doctor formula, call me in the morning if you don't feel better. And the way, the way you, you can send, you can meditate simply by closing your eyes and sending somebody love and kindness. It's, it's, and you get better at it. You feel better. And for example, if you're sitting in your apartment in your home, which I'm sure you are wondering what to do because you're sequestered like I am, you probably have all of your clients on your phone. So just start with the A's and pick up the first name you see. I'm going to say Anne Morado because she's, she's cool. I would just close my eyes and say, I send you love and kindness and go through B and go through C and go through D and repeat it over and over. When you get really good at it, you're gonna send it to the people you don't think you like. And then now you're really rocking. That's right. But see, but see, it's 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 a form of meditation, and it's a form of you getting yourself out of yourself and doing something for remembering that, you know, you your clients are going to be there. You're because you have them in your heart and in your mind. Oh, I love that, and and that's the perfect segue to what we're going to talk about next time I get to see you. <laughs> is we're going to talk about clients, client retention. You've written so much about that. You've even written about how to break up with a client. But um, because of that fear, because of are my clients going to be there? Uh, what's it going to look like? We're going to talk just about, as you said, there's, there's a lot of things out of our control, but we're going to talk about some of the things that are within your control and maybe some um, best practices, I, you know, so um, leave us with that, that juicy little tidbit yes, you yes, wrapped yes. about. I well, love that. Yes. It's a little bit of a juicy tip. Um, you need to stay in touch with your clients uh, in a soft way, not in a big hustle way. Uh, I mean, clients are also very worried about their own finances. They don't need a hairdresser telling them not to, to color their hair at home. Just be soft, be gentle, be there with them because you are there for them as they are there for you. And remember, people bond to people. People are loyal to people, not to skills. I know you do a good haircut. I know you do a great facial and your nails rock. But the reason they come to see you is because you, as a salon professional, are wonderful. Oh, Carlos, you are wonderful. Oh. <laughs> I love talking to you. Yes. And thank you. Thank you, as always. I'm going to stop recording, but you stay on so we can, we can, we can talk privately. All right. <laughs>